hello, we are live. All right. So a very, very big welcome to you if you're joining me live. Also a big welcome if you're joining on the replay. Now, if you're live, give me a comment below. Let me know where you're tuning in from. For those of you who are here in Sydney with me, I hope you've got your lunch ready or some snacks ready. And let's kick off today um, with a bit of an intro. So my name is Amy. I'm a career and life coach, and I'm super excited to have you here with me today. This is actually my very first Facebook Live. So I've got some nervous jitters, some nervous excitement, and I really appreciate you dialing in to be here with me today. Now, I'll start off by um, letting you know what to expect for today's live and what you'll leave this session with. So first off, the topic for today's live is how to make difficult career decisions. And what I'll be covering in today's chat with you over the next 10 to 15 minutes, you'll be learning all about, firstly, the psychology behind decision making. What actually goes on up here in our brains when we make decisions every day? And through understanding that, how can you actually take advantage of that to make decisions that are right and aligned for you? The second thing we'll cover is something known as decision paralysis. That's a situation where you feel frozen, you feel unable to actually make a decision and you start to procrastinate. What's happening there and how do we actually stop that so that it doesn't happen again? And thirdly, I'll be covering the number one most important question to ask yourself before you actually go ahead and make any important career decision. Okay. So if you're interested in that, if you're ready to go, then let's, let's do it. Let's dive in. So first of all, a little bit of housekeeping for you. Um, this live is being set up in a group, a new group. It's called the Positive Action Careers Community. Now, this is something that I've just created. And my intention here is really to create an open space for people to join and to support each other through the ups and downs of career changes. As someone who has been working in corporate for over 10 years and someone who has now moved away from that into a career coaching side, uh, I actually have a side uh, business, the coaching universe. I'm really investing in creating a safe space because I know from my own personal experience that it's not easy, right? It's not easy navigating your career. And I think back to all the times when I just wish that I had a support network who I could ask questions to, bounce ideas off. And that's what the Positive Action Careers community is all about. So if that sounds aligned with what you want and you need, um, hit join so that you can join in in this free live training, connect with other people and, and really network and get support. So let's kick off with our very first topic today. It's called the 12 cognitive biases. Now give me a little wave if you've heard of this before. The 12 cognitive biases is something that I actually came across through my life coaching studies and while I was training up to be a life coach. You may have heard of them. Um, if you are near a computer, you can plug that in, the 12 cognitive biases. And what this talks about are the unconscious biases that we might carry with ourselves as we make our decisions every day. So first up, I want you to think about from the moment you woke up this morning, to now, how many decisions have you already made? It might be deciding to actually turn off your alarm and get out of bed, deciding what to wear today, deciding how you want to do your hair, deciding what to eat for breakfast. There are an infinite number of decisions that we make on a daily basis. So just have a think about that. In the last few hours, how many decisions have you already made? And as you can imagine, our brains are going into overdrive every day, making all of these decisions. And so to help ourselves out, we sometimes actually lean on what we call biases. Now these 12 cognitive biases, um, very interesting stuff. I'm going to deep dive into four of these today because I think they are very common and very relevant for you to be aware of as you go ahead and make decisions about your life, your career, and everything that's going on. So the first one is called the sunk cost fallacy. 
Now the sunk cost fallacy is saying that we are making decisions not based on something that's rational, but based on the investment of time, energy and effort that we've already put in into this particular decision. Let me give you an example. I've worked with people who have studied to become a lawyer. So they started off in university, they invested five years studying a bachelor's degree, and then after graduating from that, they then invested more time and energy studying a master's of law. After that, they've gone out, gotten some practical experience, gone through the motions um, of actually getting admitted into the bar so that they can practice law here in Australia. Many, many t uh, hard work, tears, efforts have gone into this. And then after a few years of working, they've decided that actually they're not really enjoying this anymore. It's not for them and they're considering a career change. But because of the sunk costs that they perceive, they put so much time and energy and investment already into this, they start to feel that guilt. I should be doing this because I've already put in so much energy into this. I've already expended this energy and so I should continue with this, right? Well, this is why it's a fallacy. Because the truth is, the energy that you've already invested, that's not lost. This may be the time for you to actually take that experience and to try a new opportunity. It's a time for you to step away and, and do something new. And so the sunk cost fallacy, you can see how that can really impact your decision and stop you from making rational decisions because of all the emotions. It really comes from a place of emotion. And sometimes that can actually stop you from having a look at the bigger picture and to move forward in that new direction. The second one is called the anchoring bias. Now the anchoring bias, what that is saying is we place more weight on information that we see first. And then we start using that information as a baseline for, for comparison. Um, an example that comes to mind is when you're doing a job search. So imagine this, you're looking for jobs on Seek and you come across a, a really cool role. And then as you have a look at that job description, as we all do, there is usually a long list of requirements. And so you're looking at those lists of requirements and the first one that you see is, we are looking for a candidate who has five years or more in this particular field. And after that, they start to list off other things they're looking for. Now, I've worked with candidates who come to me and they say, I really want to apply for this job, but I can't because I don't have that five years or more of experience in this field. And then I ask them, well, what about the other criteria? What about the other 10 things in the list? Have you done those? They say, yes, but I can't apply. I'm not good enough because I haven't done that first thing. I don't have five years or more. So even though these candidates fulfill over 90% of the criteria out of 11 things they fulfilled 10, they feel that they can't apply, they're not qualified because of the anchoring bias. They're putting too much weighting on the first piece of information that they saw. Does that sound familiar? Does that resonate with any of you? Now the third bias I wanted to touch on is called the confirmation bias. The confirmation bias is when our brains start to seek evidence to confirm a belief that you already have. A really common example of this is when someone is looking to buy a car. So let's say you've made a decision, you want to buy a red Mazda. You've decided, yep, that's the one for you. And then from that moment onwards, once you've made that decision, when you go to the shopping mall, you have a look in the car park, suddenly you start noticing all these red masters. In every row you see, oh, another red master. You're driving along the streets, you're driving along the freeway, you start to notice there's a red master, there's a red master. And even as you're stopping on a traffic light, you start to notice all of these red masters. Now, are there actually more red masters in the world? No. But what your brain has done is because you've made this decision that you want to buy a red Mazda, this confirmation bias is influencing what you actually notice. And you're starting to pay attention to all the red Mazdas in the world because it's confirming that decision that you've made is the best one. Let me apply this to a work situation. 
Uh, I once worked with a candidate who wanted to get promoted from an assistant manager role to a manager role. And when I asked them and deep dived into why they didn't feel confident in stepping or putting their hand up for that manager role, they told me, well, only extroverts get promoted at my workplace. Only extroverts get promoted, and I'm not an extrovert. And again, this is confirmation bias at play. They started to observe the people who are in manager positions, but they could only see the people who were outspoken, who had extrovert personalities, and they were comparing themselves to that. And so you can see how confirmation bias can negatively influence your decision making. <clears throat> now the fourth, <coughs> excuse me, the fourth bias I'll mention is called recency bias. Now this is an interesting one. Of course, it's easier to remember things that happened more recently. And recency bias is when we recall more recent events and we place more importance on these than events that happened way in the past. Let me give you an example um, in a work situation. So let's say you've been asked to do a presentation at work to a client. Now at this point, you're starting to feel some jitters. And you think about the last time you presented. You think, man, last week I presented to a client and I didn't do so well. I was having a bad day, I, I, I didn't speak well, I didn't present, I didn't deliver well. And it starts to erode your confidence. But you're not thinking about the time before last week, all those other times that you delivered really, really well, you did a fantastic job, you delivered an effective, engaging presentation. In fact, there is evidence to support that. You have done that in the past, but due to the recency bias, you can only recall the last experience you had. Does that sound familiar? Now, I won't go through all of the biases, but as you can see and understand, these biases have a really big impact on our decision making. And so it's important to be aware of these so that we can then stand away as we're making a decision and ask ourselves, am I making this decision in a rational way? Or is there a bias that's getting in the way of me making my best decision? All right, let's move on to talking about decision paralysis. Now, decision paralysis happens when you've got too many options at hand and suddenly the decision you need to make, it gets very, very complex and your brain goes, right, this is too hard, stop, fight or flight. Has anyone experienced this before? I'll give you a, a funny situation. Um, my brother, my youngest brother, when he was much younger, he was often the victim of decision paralysis. He found it really hard to make decisions, even in a basic lifestyle situation such as going to a food court and deciding what to eat for lunch. There were too many options, and even though he could choose anything he wanted, he would choose nothing because he felt that the options were too hard and his brain would stop him and go into a state, a frozen state. Now, when this happens, there's one very simple way to get out of this, and it is this, keep it simple. Don't overthink it, keep it simple. And ask yourself, what is my best case scenario? If I went down this route, what is the best case Best case scenario. If I do this, what's the best case scenario? And that very simple question can often help you move forward. You're opening the door to opportunities that can help you move forward. And you even start to recognize, hang on, if I don't do this, I'm going to be missing out on all these amazing, incredible opportunities. Okay, now the third topic I wanted to talk about today is that number one question to ask yourself before making a big career decision. Now, uh, let me just share a fun fact with you. I'm a huge fan of reality TV shows. So over here in Australia, we've got MasterChef, we've got The Amazing Race, we've got The Bachelor. Now, I don't know about you, but I am an avid supporter of all of these shows, and they have something in common. 
In all of these reality TV shows, they often like to ask the candidates, why are you doing this? Are you doing this for the right reasons? And so the question I want you to ask yourself is, am I doing this for the right reasons? I'll repeat that again. Am I doing this for the right reasons? Now, the reason why this is a really important question to ask is because it comes down to the why. The why that you're doing something. And you'll, you'll start to understand that the why, the reason why you do anything, is really the foundation that leads to the behaviors and the actions that follow. So, for example, let's say you are considering leaving your current job and having a look at what's out there on the market. Now, the question is, am I doing this for the right reasons? Am I wanting to leave my job for the right reasons? Why do I want to do this? I spoke to a friend recently, and as I started to dig with this line of questioning, why are you looking for another job? Well, the first response he gave me was, well, I feel undervalued. And when we dug deeper, well, why do you feel undervalued at your current job? It was actually coming down to the relationship that he had with his team, that he wasn't speaking up and he wasn't getting the support he needed. Now, it's really important to really deep dive into this, the why, are you doing it for the right reasons? Because if we don't understand the why and the intention behind something, it's very hard to land in the right place and you can often carry the same problem around with you. So even though he might land another job in, in a new environment, if he's not understanding the why of the communication breakdown, he could easily find himself falling into the same situation in a different environment. Okay, so why? Asking yourself, am I doing this for the right reason? Um, and another quick tip um, that I'll throw in there is a problem solving technique called the five whys. Very simply, you ask the question why, and you follow up again, another layer deeper, and why is that, and so on and so on. Now it's called the five whys because you can ask why five times, in fact you can, you can ask it six times, seven times, eight times, as many times as you need to get to the root cause. Okay, so that's called the five whys. If you want um, more examples on that, um, pop that into Google, the five whys. It's a very popular problem solving technique and I think it will serve you well. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover with you today in terms of the topic of how to make difficult career decisions. So let's recap what we've talked about. Number one, the 12 cognitive biases and understanding that biases are prevalent when we make decisions every single day. And being aware of these biases so that you can sense check, am I making a decision for the, the right reasons or is something clouding my judgment and making me less rational? Secondly, we talked about decision paralysis, when your brain goes into fight or flight, when it's getting too hard and it can't process and make a decision. And what I want you to do is to focus on the upside. Ask yourself, what is my best case scenario? Number three, we talked about the question to ask yourself when you're making a decision. Am I doing this for the right reason? Use the why. Use the five whys to dig deep and get really clear on the reason you're doing something before making that decision. So I hope those three strategies are valuable to you, no matter where you are in your career, um, I, I hope you can find an application for them. Now, um, if you enjoyed this session, I'd love for you to leave a comment below which strategy resonated the most with you and why. And for the biases, which of the biases have you experienced? And I'd love to hear from you. I'm hoping to do these um, live Facebook trainings more and more often, so if you do have a suggestion for another topic, again, get in touch, um, join the community, hit the join um, right up at the top, and post your comment. Let me know what topics you'd like to see. So we'll wrap it up here. Thank you so much for joining in, and I hope you have an amazing afternoon, and I'll see you next time. Bye.